I apologize if the lighting is a little bit weird. Actually, wait, let me... There we go. I feel like that's a little bit more straight. Ah! Ah! Anyway, I'm not editing this out. No, sir. I'm not going to start again. No, sir. Welcome to an epic episode of Mac Music Review. In this episode, the needle drop... It is, okay, it's the one year anniversary, or it was in like the end of April, it was the one year anniversary of this album, Neo Theater by AJR. And I, you know, he gave it a not good. It, it, Needle Drop reviewed the album like a good bit after it already was released, and then a good while after it was already released, like a couple weeks passed, and then said, you know what, this album is not good. Needle Drop gave it the big, the big lowest possible score. Not good is worse than a one, is worse than a zero. Not good is an album that is basically unlistenable. He said this was unlistenable. And I went to the tour. I went to the concert. We bought the tickets before the album came out. And um, the, the album, the CD, came with the tickets. And um, so I have listened to this album a ton in the car in preparation for the concert because concerts are way more fun when you've already like listened to the music a lot. So... Um, yeah, today we're going to be asking the question, is Neo Theater not good? I think a big turnoff for AJR, because these guys are absolutely despised by the music critic community. Music critics, a lot of music critics and publications have refused to talk about them, but the music review YouTubers have talked about them, like Spectrum Pulse, ARTV. ARTV and Spectrum Pulse notoriously hate AJR. Needle Drop didn't say anything about AJR until this album. He was quiet about them until this, and then he did the Not Good video. He didn't mention, he didn't say anything about the click. But, um, I think a big turnoff for them is the lyrics. And I know that's a big turnoff, because the lyrics of AJR are very, are targeted towards a very specific demographic of people in college and millennials. Their lyrics really reflect millennial culture, millennial angst, like things like not wanting to move out of your parents' house, about feeling this attachment and feeling this fear of the unknown, this fear of constantly wanting to be in a transitional stage, which is what the song Next Up Forever is about. They always want to be next up forever. They don't want to be up. They want to be next up. They don't want to be there. They want to be almost there. And and the, the whole song is with, filled with reflections on stuff like that. And that is the... That is the message their music has sent out since The Click. I don't know if it's much of that on Living Room, but since The Click, that's kind of their vibe. They even say on the last song on this album, don't forget about me when you get out of college on finale. So they're literally, and they're speaking to, directly to the listener who they're assuming is in college. They def very clearly define their audience, which is very interesting. Musically, lyrically, musically and lyrically, this album is extremely creative, and AJR, that's what I really love about AJR, is they're so different from other pop music. They're just so weird and out there. They use tons of instruments, they use trumpets, they use all this weird stuff, like super suppressed trumpets, <laughs> if that bothers you, like really, really suppressed, like on the entertainments here, and other songs, but they're just, they have this just creative voice that just really stands out amongst all of the garbage pop music, and all pop music Pop is just the genre of just fitting a certain mold and being like everybody else. And this album is just extremely creative and weird. And I really like that about it. Just gonna try to go through the track list to kind of give you a piece of, like, just kind of explain the album. Next Up Forever is an epic opener to this album. Music, drums, effects on this thing just make it feel larger than life. The line where he says, this is my imagination, this is how it looks and sounds, just pops off just super epic there is some there are some awkward lyrics on this thing but there's you know it's AJR you have to you have to take all their music with a grain of salt these guys are millennials or I don't know if they are yeah they're millennials singing to college age kids about millennial struggles or if they're even if they're not millennials they're singing to millennials and I don't even know I don't know how old they are I don't know if they're technically millennials but next up forever is an awesome song birthday party is a super 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 weird song the song is extremely odd. It's sung from the perspective of a baby. So weird. Who in the world would do that? AJR. Nobody else. No one else would do this. No, no, no one serious artist would do this. Only AJR would do this. And I'm calling them a serious artist. I don't even know if that's correct. But they, they do offer reflections, political reflections on this and this. And they kind of oversimplify things. But 
that's what tends to happen when you do a what four minute song the outro to the song is really cool and really well done needle drop hated it but it's very it's very cool and it's very different 100 bad days is a song i struggled with because it just seems to me kind of cringy the a hundred bad days made a hundred good stories a hundred good stories makes me interesting at parties and that's the whole hook of the song and like the music the hook pops off in terms of music and energy like i love the way this song sounds the opening music is really interesting and then but the lyrics seem a little bit cringe but when you think about it the idea of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger they talked about the song you know this there's this calm idea of what doesn't kill you makes you stronger they say what doesn't kill you makes you more interesting which is so much more realistic of a message and that's what this is about like bad stuff happening to you eventually you can laugh about it and that's just a message that i've never heard in a song i've never heard that before and that's what they're saying so once again very original and unique don't throw out my legos is a cry to the millennial generation people who don't want to move out it's this feeling of, I don't want to move out. Wait, I want to move out. I don't want to move on is what the lyrics say. They say, don't throw out my Legos because I'm going to want to come back home. It's about going to an apartment and then they send Christmas cards and they talk about how the Christmas cards are really boring and they feel weird and, and just odd. Send it, you know, sending parents the Christmas cards or sending other people Christmas cards from their new apartment. And it's just a, you know, it's a song that captures this feeling that you're not going to that most people aren't going to relate to. But if you're in college, if you're a millennial, you may be relating to this message. And so, you know, AGR really alienates their audience. But musically, this song is really cool, really unique structure, and I just have a ton of fun with it. Break My Face. Some people hate this song. I think it's kind of a banger. It's the most click-sounding song on this album with just the suppressed horns and the bum bum and then there's at the end of the song you have this line where they say and everything's going great which is a callback to birthday party and it's so cool when you're listening to the album in order and they reference a song earlier in the track list and i absolutely jam to this song i know a lot of people don't like it but i think it's just a lot of fun and i, I really even though the lyrics on this one are really weird and a little bit cringy i think it, the song makes up for it with the music because this song pops off Turning Out Part 2, obviously, is a sequel, if you don't, if you don't listen to AJR, if you don't, haven't heard The Click, is a sequel to Turning Out From The Click, and Turning Out From The Click is a thousand times better than this song. This song is boring. This is their most, this is their most, like, traditional sounding song, really simple music, like acoustic type music, and it's just not interesting. It's just a love song, and I don't care for it. The Entertainments here is a song that I originally absolutely despised. Because I always skipped it at the beginning, but this song gets better. It The energy picks up. It first sounds, like, really lame. It sounds... It's unique, but it just sounds, like, really bad. But the more... The, as the song progresses, it gets better. And the lyrical content on this one is very interesting as well, so I actually like it. Karma is another song that has grown on me a ton. It is lyrically kind of weird, because it's like they believe in karma, and they're expecting... It's them realizing that karma is not a real thing. They're like, where... The heck is the karma, is what they ask in this song. They're at a, it's a set as a therapy session, and they're like, Doctor, what's up? Where's the karma? Where, where, why is, I'm doing good things. Why is good not happening to me? It's like, dude, why are you singing about this? Why do you believe in karma? Like, are you, are you a Buddhist? Are you a Hindu or something? Like, what? It's, it's really, that part of it's weird, but musically it's good, and the sentiment, and there is heart behind it. There, it really, he does feel, sound very genuine, so this is a good song. Beats is absolute garbage. I, I don't feel like I need to explain why it, it's garbage. Just listen to it and you'll immediately be like, there's something off about this song. Terrible song. That and Turning Out Part 2 are not, not good. Terrible. And part, Turning Out Part 2 is not, is not horrible, but it's not that great. It's, it's not that good. And then this song is terrible. Wow, I'm Not Crazy is another song I would skip because I, it just feels so off-putting with the lyrics. But once again, there is heart behind this song. There is, there is heart behind this feeling of another person giving you this comfort. And it just feels very real. And the music on this one is pretty good. The breakdown, the EDM type breakdown at the end of the song will, will turn a lot of people off. But I personally like it. I mean, I can understand if you don't like it, but I like it. Dear Winter is an acoustic, heartfelt ballad. Which, once again, the idea and the weirdness and the creativity of the song will turn people off because he doesn't even have a girlfriend or a wife or anything. 
and he's singing to his future child who he's going to name Winter. And he's having this conversation, it's kind of like seven years, where the child is aging and he's giving these, he's talking, he's, he wrote this song to his future child and he's talking about, you know, when you go to school and then when you grow up and then I want to take shots with you and I want to teach you how to curse. It's like, why do you want to, why? That's such a stupid, weird, that's such a stupid, weird thing to say. But it's H-A-R. It's quirky. It's weird. And this song is super heartfelt. I, I think I felt a little bit emotional first time I listened to this and I still can, I still feel the heart behind this song more than anything else on this album. This is a really heartfelt song, believe it or not. Finale is an epic closer. It's a self-aware song where, you know, it, it, it mm, uh, mm, mm, I don't even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. At the end of the song, it ends with this really epic Disney style chorus and it just sounds orchestral and epic like the first song, but this song even more so brings this Disney vibe, this big cinematic closing ending and the lyrics where he sings about don't forget me, when you get out of college, if this is my final album, I hope I made you smile. That's all I ever wanted. Singing directly to the person listening to the song. And it, I know a lot of people aren't going to feel it's genuine, but dude, it is epic. It's epic. It is cinematic. And I love it. I love this song. Honestly, I really like this album. And every single song on this album brings something to the table. In terms of creativity, in terms of music, in terms of lyrics, in terms of ideas, every single song. This is just an extremely creative album, just like The Click. There's a lot of really unique stuff on here, and uniqueness is something that's completely missing from pop music. And AJR have that. They have uniqueness, and it's on this album, and I love it. I'm going to give this album a light 8 out of 10. Honestly, I really like it. Not everything on here works great, but every song besides beats and turning out part two and even turning out part two brings something to the table but i really like this album what do you think about ajr they actually do have a fan base they do have i i, I don't know if the entire fan base i'm guessing a lot of their fan base is teenage girls but once again they, they specifically say in this album it's very much targeted if they explicitly say don't forget about us when you get out of college like they're specifically talking to college age kids and millennials, a lot of the ideas on here are millennial ideas about this fear, and it just captures this, it captures something with this album. AJR did something special with this album, and I really respect them for it. Bang is not a great song. Bang is, is them trying to be self-aware, and that's what they do that a little bit in this album, but Bang is them trying to be self-aware and kind of angsty and cool, and it just, maybe it will grow on me, because that's what their AJR stuff does for me. It grows on me, but I don't know. I don't really like that song. Anyway, have a great rest of your day.